What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carefree. Uh, today we're going to be covering a few topics. Today we're going to talk about Ethereum, Bitcoin, Ethereum Classic. I promise I won't forget it this time. I forgot the last video, but I got y'all. And then we're going to talk about DOT, Telcoin, and then uh, Monero again. Because I think you guys have, uh, actually uh, were pretty interested in that one. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into the charts. Let's see. Oh, also, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and give this video a like. Uh, comment down below if you got any questions throughout the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, back to the price action. So we have this ascending triangle, you know, for everyone that's new here, we've been talking about this for a little bit now, but um, pretty much we're just playing out of range. We're just moving sideways, consolidating. Uh, ascending triangle usually implies upside. It's a sign of accumulation, right? And so if we do break to the upside, my target for this is going to be about $3,700. And the way we'd be able to confirm this is if we go ahead and close any daily candle above about $3,000. So the top of this resistance right here. <clears throat> and then uh, obviously that move up to, you know, $3,700 isn't going to be like, you know, in one day it could be, but I highly doubt that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to be over the course of like the next week, we slowly make our way back up to, you know, $3,700. Uh, mainly because this market seems to be slowing down and typically that's what happens over the summertime anyways. Uh, markets just tend to slow down. Traditionals, uh, you know, crypto, they're both heavily correlated and so that's what I'm looking to happen and we kind of probably uh, just grind out this area between about you know two thousand dollars and uh, four thousand dollars probably for the next two to three months until about the fall time and then uh, probably pick up from there because usually around the holidays is when things tend to pick up but anyways don't be fooled right now like this this is all looking pretty good looking like it wants to you know put in a low right here but uh, <laughs> they can easily, very easily come back down to, you know, the low side of the range at about $2,400 and uh, still be fine. But, uh, you know, this is a consolidation formation or, you know, this is like uh, us just consolidating. Uh, ascending triangles typically do have measured moves, right? Or not measured moves. They have that, but they also have a timing factor with them. So when they get about, you know, 75% full, they tend to break or, you know, get resolution. You know what I mean? And so that would come in around, you know, probably around like right here-ish. So around like 18 or 17 June is when we should actually see resolution of this. And you know, if you're wondering how I got the measured move, I just took it from, you know, this high down to, you know, this trend line right here and just projected that up. <clears throat> so very easy. That's what I'm looking to happen. We could still get some wicks down to about $2,400. We could even close candles around $2,400. But as long as we're living above this low at about, you know, 2285, I'm looking for the trend to continue. Moving averages are all saying pretty much like, hey, there's no trend here. This is consolidation. ADX DMI, right? This indicator right up here uh, is also confirming that everything's pretty much below the threshold. And so nothing's trending right now. There is no, there, there's no trend, you know, it's just boring sideways price action right now. Uh, Stokes are looking healthy. Again, I, I expect them to continue to keep on, you know, heading on up. Do I, I I'm looking for this to get resolved to the upside. That's what I'm leaning towards. Uh, again, that's invalidated with any closure, pretty much below this low or below this trend line right here. And, you know, I think that pretty much covers everything on Ethereum on the daily. Let's take a, take a look at the weekly and see how that closed. Yeah, we closed really, really nice on the weekly. We closed above the 10 EMA. And so I am looking for that extension uh, probably, you know, over the course of the next several weeks, probably about $3,500 is what I'm looking for. Um, this is looking really good. We are coming in with this uh, weekly trend line right here on the stochastics. And um, what I'm looking for is for us to turn up right here. Now we're like right there at it. Uh, if this does break, that is going to imply a bit more downside uh, for going into the next like week or two of price action. But I think it's going to hold up. It's been holding up ever since, you know, September 2019. So we'll, we'll see, right? If something's been working that long, it's probably going to keep working. <clears throat> All right, and then again, if this weekly trend line does break, I would target moves back down probably to about like $1,500. I don't think that's what's happening though. This all looks really good. We haven't even made a lower low on the weekly, barely a lower low on the daily. Like everything's looking pretty pretty solid right here for some upside. Uh, if we take a look at the 12 hour, 12 hour was saying, you know, it was likely that would come down at about $2,400. Um, obviously I was wrong on that one. Um, we also have now developed this trend line on the 12 hour Stokes. I was going to point this out yesterday, but I thought it was probably just a bit too immature. Um, I wanted to have a few more points before I actually like 
went ahead and put it up and I guess it would go more so something like this. It's a pretty aggressive one, but yeah, that's, that's more so what it would go on as. And so I expect us to go ahead and turn up right here and keep going. But again, this is like the unconfirmed third point because we actually haven't gotten that official closure. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure if we get back below the 55 on a 12 hour, I'm pretty sure these will start turning up again. They look like they want to cross up right now. <clears throat> So yeah, that is definitely implying a little bit more upside in the short term. Um, this this low is looking all good. Yeah, RSI is looking healthy in the neutral zone. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the six hour. Let's see, we'll go ahead and get rid of this trend line since we're not gonna be referencing that anymore. Uh, six hour, looking like it wants to go ahead and take a move back up to, you know, about 29.05. So pretty much the, uh, the purple 200 MA right up here. Stokes getting that fresh cross to the upside confirmed, and they're they're like healthily up there, very very erect in this uh, in this current posture right here, and rejecting the bearish control zone over at this 35 uh, level right here on the stochastics, and so that's a very strong read, and yeah, I'm looking for this to probably break, probably break here soon, um, probably in this next drive up, especially since we kind of closed at the highs on this last six hour. Yeah, this is all looking like super good right here. <laughs> Yeah, so 2,900 and then after 2,900 gets broken, I would be looking for a move up to about $3,200. Again, that's if we close above it. There we go. Don't want you guys to just think if we're wicked above it, that's going to mean we're getting, coming up to, you know, like $3,200. Not what I'm saying. Anyways, if we take a look at the four hour, four hour is saying pretty much if we close below, if we get a four hour closure above the 200 EMA right here, this blue line that's kind of been governing our highs. For, you know the past like week or two uh, I would look for that move up to about three thousand dollars in the uh, very short term and then maybe play out a small pullback to the uh, prior highs at around you know 28 2900 yeah like 2900 and then uh, probably take back off uh, from there everything's looking really good we have uh, three drives of hidden bullshit divergence along these lows along this consolidation uh, typically that's going to elevate these markets back up and uh, get them to some new highs and so that's all looking really really good right here uh, ADX DMI, not looking like no, nothing to really speak about on this bad boy. Let's see anything else on Ethereum. I mean, like, we'll take a look at the hourly and see what's up. My hourly, all the moving averages are finally, like, unfucked at this point. And so that's actually really good. Uh, again, everything's looking really healthy right here. I, I have no complaints on anything. I'm just pretty much waiting for this range to get broken, to be honest. So, I mean, like, do we even, the real question is, do we even fill this thing out to about 75% or do we go ahead and uh, just continue up? I mean, I guess you could honestly, like, if you're counting this as a low, which is still kind of immature to be counting this as a low, you could probably draw something maybe like this. You could, yeah. Mm, even then, I probably wouldn't, but it's possible. Um... But yeah, I definitely think we go ahead and uh, I think we're going to be breaking this thing real, really soon based off our current posturing, um, maybe in the next few days. Uh, consolidations are hard, man, you know, like just timing the market. I don't think you can really time the market, you know, but I do think we're getting a little bit more mature in this consolidation formation. And then if we go ahead and take a look at volume right here and you see how it's just tapering off throughout this whole thing and we're pretty much like at nothing uh, right now. <clears throat> Yeah, I do, I do think we're getting uh, pretty pretty mature in this, and we're probably going to be looking for a resolution here uh, very soon, probably very soon, probably within the next couple of days, if not today. Um, don't, don't hold me on the timing factor on that one, though. Um, anyways, I think that kind of wraps it up for Ethereum. You know, same stuff we've been talking about. Uh, I just think it's uh, getting a little bit closer to that time of it actually happening. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about Bitcoin. Is this on analysis? This, yeah, this is. All right, Bitcoin tests the bottom side of the range. We didn't break it. No closures below about $34,000. And um, if I have to call it, I'm guessing we're going to be testing the top side of the range. Stokes uh, are wanting to cross down, uh, or have crossed down, right? Yeah, Stokes have crossed down, so that's not that's not too hot. But we, the neutral zone is typically the like flip flop re region to where like your Stokes are likely to go ahead and uh, flip around most often, like look right here, 
right here, right over here. It's just, it's just what happened. So again, I would still like to see this a little bit more. Everything looks good right here. We don't have any breakage of structure. And if anything, we just put in a higher low. I would like to see that confirmed with any kind of closure above uh, this candle's like wick at about uh, 36, 510. we get any closure above that, uh, yeah, I'd be looking for, you know, extension back up to about, you know, $39,000. Uh, very easy. <clears throat> Again, for all, all you guys that are new here, uh, this box region uh, to the top right here, this is the uh, bull trap region. So as price action goes ahead and gets up there, um, if Bitcoin puts in a high right there or any type of, you know, sign of weakness in that in that area, I would look for a move back down to, you know, about $34,000 and maybe even then break the lows. We'll see. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and so, uh, again, you know, I say it every video and I'll say it again because, you know, oh, this, this market's very immature and a lot of people just don't really know what they're doing. Um, the bull trap region is meant to make you feel as though, you know, we're going to keep on continuing to the upside. Uh, it's meant for you to go ahead and put on longs. That's the whole point. It's, you know, it's, it's manipulation, you know, psychologically manipulation, you know, like it's, it's the name of the game, right? You got to be very strong mentally to play this game. And so you got to be uh, very aware of these regions, you know, when, when stuff like this happens uh, and aware of your emotions. <clears throat> and so it's going to feel like we're going to keep it going up uh, and we may, but I would just be very, very cautious within this region uh, because it'll, it'll turn down fast. It's meant to go ahead and provide liquidity uh, in the markets, you know, meant for people to go ahead and put on a bunch of longs and then, you know, for them to get liquidated. Uh, that's, that's the point of this. So be careful. Uh, and again, that, that will be negated with any kind of candle closure above like $52,000. Again, this is this is a fatty range right here that we're playing in. Uh, I could probably shorten it down a little bit more, but let's go ahead and take a look. Dang, I always mess this up. We're trying to do a bearish retracement of this bad boy. Might be, hold on. And so um, let me draw this a little bit shorter for you guys because that is a fat range, right? And typically your bear trap region is going to be uh, around the uh, 0 0.5 and the not 0 0.5 and then the, uh, or not the not 0 0.5. Yeah, the not 0 0.5 and the not 0.382. There we go. And that's typically going to be your bull trap region. So pretty much anywhere between about $49,000 and $52,000 is where I'd be looking for that, you know, sign of weakness, just being very cautious again, you know. Uh, this is gonna. The games are gonna be played over the course of these next few months, uh, so it's gonna it's gonna be very imperative that you guys are like really trying to learn, really trying to watch these markets, and you know not get fooled out here. Uh, <clears throat> would I be looking for a resolution of the structure? Um, any closure above the prior all time high, or not all time high, but a prior high at about you know thirty nine thousand uh, dollars. I would then drive targets up to about forty one thousand dollars, and then see how it goes from there. We might might play out a little bit of a of a short-term pullback um i am being a little casual today but you know like i do want to i do want to give a lot of emphasis on this like we got the bull trap region to the to the top side we have a lot of downwards pressure if you take a look at this blue 200 exponential right here uh it's losing its slope or i mean it's lost its slope and is now curving to the downside and it has crossed below the 200 simple and we have gone through this, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it again, right? Almost every iteration minus like one that we have seen this, uh, pretty much we have seen further downside. We have seen these lows busted or at least uh, another test back at the lows. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. Let's see, where does this happen for the first time? Right over here, so you see, we start to lose our curvature, dip below the 200 simple, or yeah, 200 simple right here. And we're already consolidating along our lows. Boom, give it a test down, come back up to the bull trap region, and then again, bust, bust the low that we had already just made. Uh, that's one iteration. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Let's see, does this chart even have enough history? Yeah, so we got this one. Uh, 200 exponential goes below 200 simple. Boom. This one was a little bit quicker. <laughs> we kind of came up, tested it and busted that low. And then we ended up having a little uh, move to the um, almost bull trap region. I probably wouldn't even call it that, to be honest. I'd have to do the uh, fib extension on it, which I'm not gonna do this video. But we came up and ended up breaking that low over the course of, you know, months. Oh, and crazy, this is like May of 18, huh. 
well, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, this is a little bit of confirmation bias that I'm speaking this, but this is in May, and how long were these games played? Uh, let's see. We were kind of hanging around our lows just in this downtrend for about from May to July. So about, what, May, June, July? Three months. Shouldn't have had to count that out, but I did, right? Needed to. Anyways, for three months. And what am I saying already? That around the summertime, this is kind of when these games are played. In fact, let's, I mean, just for my own curiosity, right? When did this one happen? Okay, that was October. So, yeah, never mind. You know, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Let's see. And, you know, we do have a, we do have a few iterations where, like, the exponential does cross below the simple. But uh, this is this is a slightly different, like, move in the... Uh, in the uh, in the market cycle, you know what I mean? Like, as you can tell, these were very aggressive downturns with the uh, all moving averages trending below the uh, higher periods, essentially. That's what I'm looking for, a signal similar to that. Because I see, I, I know you guys are gonna point out how this is like flip flopping around right here, but it's not, not quite the same signal, you see. And then again, not quite the same signal. This was all just consolidation really, and yeah so slightly different my bad uh let's go ahead and see if i can find one more iteration of this and then got another one right here exponential gets below the simple boom rally up test it again we're messing around these lows get that move kind of up to like that bull trap region maybe even further than that again and then test the 200 simple and it ended up getting driven down over the course of the next few months now this one was over the like the same time frame almost, right? No, maybe I'm just making that time frame up just because you know it feels right for me. Um, yeah, and you know what? That'll be fine. But as you can see, we have multiple iterations of the same kind of signal happening, and so the down, downside pressure is on again. That's why I'm saying be very cautious in this region. We could get this move up here and uh, get rejected and bust through these lows. And if we do bust through these lows, right? As we have seen, we do multiple times. Um, First target is going to be about $30,000, and then if that does not hold, the next area is going to be about $27,000. And y'all don't really want to hear what's after $27,000 if twenty if that doesn't hold. But we'll say it. It's pretty much like nineteen, dollars almost $20,000 would be the next stop. So um, we've got a bit of a distance. Do I think we actually bust down to about $20,000? I don't. I think uh, the lowest we do is like probably put some wicks in around $27,000. Because I do think this is going to be like a three month long consolidation phase. And, you know, Bitcoin typically, you know, goes ahead and wicks down a little bit further. Uh, again, wicks is what I'm looking for. Uh, I could be completely wrong with that. Again, that's the kind of like crystal ball stuff. But um, I, I do think we kind of just slowly drag out this area and then slowly over time coming in the fall, come back up. Anyways, anything else I want to ask or, an or answer, say something like that? I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look at the... Um, the four hour for this thing. Uh, we kind of already closed above this high right here at about $36,000. So I'd be looking for a move back up to about $37,000 in the short term. Stokes are looking fine. This is on a extremely low historical volatility on the four hour too. And so I'd be looking for a relatively decent move off of this thing uh, if volatility wants to, start, wants to start to expand. But again, you know, this is kind of, this is still kind of consolidating so we'll go ahead and check back up on that. But that is very uh, interesting to know. Now, I mean, if this volatility, like expansion does come to the upside, or at least, you know, we start to get like some decent prints of volatility, I would expect that this prior high at around, you know, $39,000 does get broken and we probably test up a little bit higher to the $41,000 mark, easy. Um, what would be my condition for us trending even lower? Well, we are already in a downtrend on the four hour. Um, again, if we just go ahead and take out about 35.5 uh, on a closing basis, that would make me drive targets down a little bit lower. Um, probably back down to about $34,000, the, the low lows of this range. <clears throat> and then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum Classic. See, I told you guys I wouldn't forget today. Not today. Ethereum Classic kind of busting down at its lows. I mean, like, this is looking, this is looking bad. But 
as I've been saying for, you know, a minute now, I was expecting these moving averages to kind of converge right here. Uh, you know, price action kind of stay below it because, you know, that's what it's been doing already. Uh, this is a pretty strong downtrend right here. Um, typically, what I usually see from this, as these moving averages start to converge, we get one last, like, final try to the upside. Re retest resistance, so probably move to $77. And then um, maybe, well, ooh, I'm looking at the Stokes right here, and Stokes... <laughs> Are not uh, I'm not agreeing with the statement. Stokes are kind of indicating that we we're gonna bust these lows like now. We kind of came up, tested around the bearish or bullish control zone, and are turning down. Uh, that typically is uh, at, at the lows, mind you. And so I'm gonna have to drive targets all the way down to about forty-seven dollars on this thing. Uh, sorry for everybody that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, hoping for Ethereum Classic to rally up, but I just don't think it's it's gonna do it right here. Uh, Stokes crossing down at the lows is not not good at all <clears throat> uh the only thing that would negate that thesis is pretty much if we come back up to about 70 dollars and uh start closing candles above that that'll make me a little bit more bullish heck i mean like yeah so pretty much anything above the 21 if we close candles above the 21 i'll instantly get more bullish but right now i gotta drive my targets down to about 47 dollars. this is looking mad nasty right here <clears throat> let's see yeah Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at Polkadot. So Polkadot is looking like it wants to go ahead and put in a higher low right here. So if we go ahead and close within the 10 EMA, I'm gonna, get, I'm, I'm gonna get a lot more bullish on this. We are in a very obvious uptrend right here. We, you know, low, higher low, possible higher low in the formation. Um, if we do go ahead and confirm this as a low, I'd be looking for a move up to about $27. That's the very obvious one and then 28 $29 and you know I'm sure by the time we get up there the purple 55 is going to be right there too <clears throat> that's going to be our first time touching the purple 55 in quite some time and there is quite a bit of di divergence between these um, um, moving averages and so I kind of I kind of think we uh, test a little bit of downside probably come back down uh, and consolidate within the moving averages until they get ready to cross back up and you know that distance between them all starts to you know kind of uh uh, kind of gets reduced is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that one's easy. Uh, again, if we go ahead and pretty much take out about 2362, we could go, I'd, I'd probably drive targets back down to about 2126. Um, and then see from there, I'm not, I'm not really confident. I'm not too confident on, you know, saying this thing is going to break the lows. It's kind of hard to, I mean, it's got a lot of space to fill this out. Like this isn't even a confirmed low. So if it does want to have continuation down to about $21, by all means it can and would still be just fine. But um, it's looking like it wants to come up from right here. But there's still 15 hours left in the day. So a lot can change in 15 hours, as I'm sure all of you all know uh, by now, especially if you're buying something like Ethereum Classic or no, not <laughs> Ethereum Classic, if you're buying Polkadot. All right, let's take a look at some tell. Tell also has an ascending triangle. Uh, it's getting pretty mature. I'd look for it to kind of break by like 12 June. Uh, so it was at like probably the end of this week is what I'm looking for that. And then the measured move off that bad boy is going to be about, you know, five cents. Uh, very easy. I do think we go ahead and go to the uh, test the top size. The DMI plus is getting dominant. Uh, it is above the DMI minus. So that's a very good sign. And the ADX and DMI plus are both strengthening to the upside. I'd really like to see this get above the threshold at about 25. But I mean, if you're looking, if you have, I have really aggressive settings for my uh, ADX and DMI. And I have mine set at like 25. But if you're looking at this and you have yours set at like something not as aggressive, so like 20, um, this would be at least a like a small signal to probably like put on like a small portion of your position, right? If you're playing it like that again this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but uh it could be viewed as a signal already at least a partial signal <clears throat> again we also closed above the 10 ema Ooh, yeah i'm looking for this bad boy to, to head on up so now that we close above the 10 ema again i am looking for us to go ahead and test at least the top side of this range at about you know almost four cents uh, do we break it? I would really like to see it get broken. I'm not going to lie. This thing is getting a little mature. Volume is really tapering off over here. Like, this is looking really good. DMI ADX. Yeah, I think we may get this broken. 
uh, probably here in the next few days, if not today, you know what I mean? Well, probably not today, but within the next few days. <clears throat> and we're probably going to see that move back up to, you know, five cents. Again, this could all be, you know, invalidated with any kind of candle closure below this trend line that would negate the whole idea of this being an ascending triangle. And I would drive targets at least down to the purple 55 to about, you know, two and a half cents. If that does not hold this horizontal at about, you know, a little under two and a half cents. And then see it from there. I don't think this thing is going to like instantly fall through the ground in one day. But I mean, uh, it has and still can. And so if that area doesn't hold either, I'll drive targets all the way down to about uh, one and a half cents. And then maybe the 200 exponential because that was a good basing point for this last little move all the way down at, you know, almost one cent. Um, yeah, that one's easy. Uh, and then let's talk about Monero. Monero was looking kind of ugly yesterday, but yeah, let's take a look at it. And we'll take a look at Polonix. Poloniex, or however you say that. Uh, looking like it wants to put in a higher low. Um, I could be completely wrong about this. This thing um, about it, this not being accumulation, but it, it does look mad ugly, man. Mad ugly. And you know, again, you know, I'm not the one trading this. So you want your accumulation to look like something like this with very obvious lows and highs. Um, typically multiple of them. Something like this, where it's kind of stair-stepping its way out. But, I mean, yeah. So, <clears throat> if we do close within the 10 EMA, I would be looking for another move back up to the purple 55 at about $309. Again, that is if we confirm this as a low right here. Um, we could still get continuation. Um, easy target, if we went ahead and tested the downside, would be at least a move to about $246. Um, very easy. And then does it hold? I mean, yeah, we kind of have like this this ascending formation. I mean, we could probably put a trend line on. I'm not a big fan of trend lines. I don't really use them too much in my own trading, but you could probably put one on here. Actually, I don't use them at all in my own trading, so let's be real with that. But, yeah, so it's kind of just stair-stepping its way up. Um, again, don't get it wrong, this this fucking thing looks ugly. <laughs> With its, if, if this is accumulation on it, this thing looks super ugly. But I mean, if it's working, it's working, right? And so, move to the upside since we did kind of come in contact with this trend line. Again, I'm not the best with these bad boys. I don't even use them. I'm just using them right now just because it kind of fits. But $309, easy. And then to the downside, if we did want to get keep playing this as continuation, obviously 246. Boom, wrap that up. Uh, I think that's just about does it. If you guys got any questions, hit me up. Uh, I'm about to do a little something on VWAP. I'm almost done with my like course and how I want to implement it. I'll probably do a few trades uh, without telling you guys first, just because uh, I want to make sure it's something that I actually uh, use within my trading before I go ahead and just like start telling you guys about it. You know what I mean? But anyways, uh, if you haven't already and you stayed this long, you might as well smash the like. And then, uh, yeah, see you guys tomorrow.